Welcome to section two of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites that you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will be talking about the next GI protozoa, Entamoeba histolytica, which you can see right here. Our story takes place on an alien planet that's being destroyed. Our main character is seen escaping this pod. In case she dies during your travels, she's writing her history down for someone else who may come across it. You can see she's typed, Enter My History, the name of the program that her people use to make records. Enter My History sounds like Entamoeba histolytica, the name of this parasite. Now the planet is being ravaged by this large monster that eats everyone. You can see that it's even eaten some of her people. Look at those red people in the translucent monster belly. These red people represent red blood cells, seen in the cytoplasm of trophozoites. Another term for this concept is urethrophagocytosis, or eating of red blood cells. Now here's a microscopic image of an Entamoeba trophozoite, and it actually has several of those little RBCs. It gobbled those up, and you can see these RBCs here. This is classic Entamoeba histolytica. Now this image shows an Entamoeba cyst, and we don't really see any RBCs in it. So don't be thrown off if you see a cyst without any RBCs. After all, you generally only see red blood cells within the cytoplasm of trophozoites, not the cyst form. Now let's look at this stand that the monster has knocked over. It says protein shakes. Apparently this planet also has a thriving protein shake industry. Well protein sounds like protozoa, and Entamoeba histolytica is one of those protozoans. So protein for protozoa. Now you can see back here the city's water supply. It's actually been infected by the cysts of these monsters. This world has been truly overrun and no longer inhabitable. These hard shell cysts represent the cysts of Entamoeba histolytica. And from the water supply, you actually see some of the cysts falling into the poop. This is cow poop down here. Now these three ideas, the water supply, the cysts, and the poop, represent the fact that Entamoeba cysts are shed in the stool. If infected feces contaminate a water supply, then people will drink the cysts, thereby getting the infection. In other words, Entamoeba has fecal oral transmission, and often water supplies are the vehicle. Now after breaking open the water tower to release its progeny of cysts, this monster stomps around looking for the next way to cause mayhem. As it walks, it creates these giant imprints in the ground. These imprints represent ulcerations of the intestines. Once a cyst is ingested, a trophozoite is formed, and then it wreaks havoc on the intestines, creating all these ulcers. And so our monster here actually represents the trophozoite form. So you go from cyst to trophozoite and the trophozoite causes the intestinal ulcers. Now the monster's body is actually way too heavy for this area of the planet. So as it stomped forward, it literally cracked the ground down to the planet's center, exposing hot lava to the surface. All this hot lava has formed a river and now spills onto the surface of the planet, creating just one more problem for the poor people to deal with. Now this flowing river of lava represents the bloody diarrhea that patients experience. It makes sense that the diarrhea is bloody because the trophozoite has ulcerated the crap out of the intestines and ulcers bleed. So again, hot lava river for bloody diarrhea. Now look at these poor cows over here. They each have a liver shaped spot to help you remember the liver. And we can see this stream exiting the lava river and reaching to these liver spotted cows. This stream represents the portal vein. So just like the portal vein takes blood from the intestines and takes it to the liver, this little stream takes lava from the hot river to the liver spotted cows. This diagram shows the gastrointestinal system of veins. It's discussed in great detail in the cardiovascular anatomy chapter. And you can see the portal vein right here. It collects blood from the intestines and then sends it to the liver. Now we can see that the lava stream has melted this cow. And this melting cow represents liver abscess, which can occur when the trophozoites reach the liver. Now looking at this space pod of our escaping character, you can see it shoots down these green rays. From this angle, it almost looks like the rays are scanning those liver spotted cows. And we will use these scanning rays to represent how liver abscesses are diagnosed with a CT scan. So if you've got a patient with Entamoeba histolytica, and you think they might have a liver abscess, give them an abdominal CT scan. So we discussed how you diagnose a liver abscess, but how do you actually diagnose an Entamoeba histolytica infection? Well, we can find the answer in this escape pod. The girl was hoping to collect some specimens from the monster to try to find their weakness. Well, you can see that she collected some of the alien blood in the top vial and some of the stool in the bottom vial. She wasn't sure what researchers would find useful, so she just collected both. And if you look at each one, you can see these little gems. These gems represent antigens. When examining the stool or the blood of someone infected, you can run tests to identify certain antigens that will confirm Entamoeba histolytica. So GEMS in stool and blood stands for antigen detection in the stool or the blood. Now this escapee also scrounged up a cyst to study. The cyst was gathered from the stool, which is another way to diagnose infections. Recall that Entamoeba histolytica demonstrates fecal oral transmission because these cysts are shed in the stool. This means that you can diagnose the infection if you find cysts in the stool. This is known as an ONP, or an ova and parasite test. 
In the background, many people are trying to escape the chaos of this particular area by jumping on the metro. We like to use metro to represent metronidazole, which is a good treatment for Entamoeba histolytica. Now the people of this planet worship this queen. They've created an idol out of her image, as you can see with this glorious statue. Idol queen kind of sounds like iodoquinol, which is another good treatment. So idol queen for iodoquinol. Now this planet also has mice. And just like all the scared people escaping on the metro, this pair of mice are dangling here fearing for their life. Pair of mice sounds like paramomycin, another drug used to treat entamoeba infections. So pair of mice for paromomycin. Now some people on the planet haven't given up hope. Way in the distance, high above the gigantic monster, is a helicopter-like machine. It doesn't quite look like a helicopter you'd find on our planet, but thankfully this flying machine is carrying boiling water which the people are using to try and destroy the monster by searing its flesh. This represents the fact that boiling water can kill entamoeba cysts. This is a good way to prevent infection when you're drinking entamoeba infected water. Now that we've covered all the items in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 22-year-old female presents to her family physician for a fever and red diarrhea that began one week ago. She recently returned from a three-week humanitarian trip to Kenya. She endorses drinking water that did not undergo filtering, heating, or any other measures to ensure water cleanliness. Physical examination is significant for right upper quadrant abdominal tenderness. An ova and parasite study of her stool is examined. A micrograph of the test is shown below. Which of the following is true about her infection? A. Her right upper quadrant pain is due to infection of the biliary tree. B. Colonoscopy would reveal areas of damage to the entire mucosal layer. C. Parasitic antigens will not be found in the patient's serum. Or D. An abdominal CT scan does not have a diagnostic role this late in her workup. Hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has an entamoeba histolytica infection. She has evidence of bloody diarrhea. She drank unclean water. And she has right upper quadrant pain suspicious for a parasitic abscess. And finally, the O and P test is consistent with a parasitic infection. And we can see by looking at the micrograph that we have evidence of an RBC. Remember that this is also called urethrophagocytosis. With that in mind, the correct answer is B. Colonoscopy would reveal areas of damage to the entire mucosal layer. This is merely describing ulcers. Recall from our gastrointestinal anatomy chapter that ulcers damage the entire mucosa, while erosions damage only the epithelial layer. And we remember this from the phrase ulcerate the mucosa and erode the epithelium. Ulcers involve the entire mucosa, ulcerate has a U, and mucosa has a U. And then erode and epithelium both have an E. So areas of damage to the entire mucosal layer is consistent with ulcers. And recall the monster's footprints in the ground represent ulcerations of the intestinal mucosa. Now choice A is wrong. Right upper quadrant pain can be caused by an infection in the biliary tree. However, this infection, Entamoeba histolytica, is not known to infect the biliary tree, but rather the liver itself, causing a hepatic abscess. Remember that smaller stream which is carrying hot lava to the liver-spotted cows, and we've got one of the cows melting, which represents a hepatic abscess. Choice C is wrong because you can find antigens in the serum as well as the stool. Remember within the escape pod there were antigens in a tube of blood? and a tube of stool. Choice D is wrong because right upper quadrant pain in a patient with entamoeba histolytica is suspicious for a hepatic abscess. So a CT scan would be appropriate, even this late in her workup. So D is incorrect. And that should be all you need to know about entamoeba histolytica.